My son called me up on the phone and we were talking about the modern day church. And he said to me why he would never join the, the LDS church. He said that he was on the uh, official LDS Mormon uh, website, LDS.org. And he said I was reading and he saw the topic abortion. So he goes in and reads and he said, Mom, the Mormon church believes in abortion. I'm like, no. I'm like, what? And he said, no, go get online. Go check it out for yourself. It's on their website. Thinking, what? I never, never have occurred, never have heard this, never even have thought of it before where the LDS church stands on abortion. I want to read to you what I found out. I printed out the information and I put it on my fridge. It was just so appalling to me, I, I, I couldn't believe. Uh, abortion to me is very, very serious. I put it on my fridge and a couple of months later I had a knock at the door and I had these two lady Mormon missionaries come to my door, really sweet. They were asking me questions. Have you ever heard of the Book of Mormon? I said, yes. And they were, they were like happy. And, and this, where I lived, it wasn't a good area in Glendale. There was a lot of crime. I mean, I would wake up nights and they had the helicopters and they're looking for the guy that did whatever. I'd look out my door and they're prostitutes, you know, in the black, nylons and let's just say it wasn't a nice LDS neighborhood. Um, they asked me about Joseph Smith and I told them yes I believe he's a prophet of God and they were just like <gasps> smiling they, you know this is great and you believe in the Book of Mormon yes I do um, but then I didn't want to lead them on you know because I already knew where I stood with the modern-day church and, I, and it's like my son said, you don't have to go into plural marriage, you don't have to go into the blacks and the priests, you don't have to go into all this stuff. Um, I just stated I could never join a church that sanctions and believes in abortion that would kill their own babies. And one of the... Uh, missionary girl, she was the younger one, her eyes just went like this. She's never heard that before. The older one of the two, her eyes narrowed. She knew exactly what I was saying. And I just said, I, I prize life. So anyway, I'm going to read this and bear with me if, if you would please. 49% of all pregnancies are unwanted. Half of those pregnancies end in abortion. Half of the 49. Women who are 45 years of age and under, one third of them have one or, or more abortions. There have been over 50 million abortions in the United States since Roe versus Wade. 50 million. I can't comprehend that. So since 1973, we have legally, legally killed over 50 million babies in this country alone. This is more lives lost than in the Civil War, the First World War, the Second World War, all the wars combined. That's a lot of life. That's a lot of people that this country has legally killed. So let's break it down so we can really look at this and have it sink into our heads. There are 3,322 abortions per day in America. 138 every hour in America. 
There are two babies killed every minute. Two babies killed every minute. A life is taken. These two lives every minute in America. And these are statistics from uh, Dr. Ed Young on Winning Walk. Now, the LDS Church Handbook, 2010, on abortion. The Lord commanded, Thou shalt not kill, nor do anything like unto it. And this is DNC 59, verse 6. The church opposes elective abortion for personal or social conveniences. Members must not submit to, perform, or arrange for, pay for, consent to, or encourage an abortion. They should have stopped there. They should have stopped there. But it goes on. The only possible exceptions are when Number one, pregnancy resulted from forcible rape or incest. Horrific crimes, horrible. But then you're gonna compound that crime with murder. A competent physician determines that the life or health of the mother is in serious jeopardy. So you get your competent physician, he's gonna say if the mother's Life or health, that can mean a lot. So you can kill your baby if the physician says, you know, if you have this baby, you'll die. So let's kill. You'll have a tummy ache. Or you might have psychological problems. A competent physician determines that the fetus which I call baby, which it means baby anyway, but I like the word baby better, has severe defects that will not allow the baby to survive beyond the birth. So they're saying, well, you know what? The baby's not gonna live beyond the birth, so let's kill it before it dies when it comes. What's the sense in, that doesn't, what? Why not let God, who is the judge of the life giver and the life taker, let him call the shots. So we're going to take this life because it's already going to die when it's born. Now they're saying, I'll read on, even these exceptions do not justify abortion automatically. Abortion is a most serious matter and should be considered only after the persons responsible have consulted with their bishops and receive divine confirmation through prayer, you're going to have, you're going to receive divine confirmation to kill your baby after you've prayed? I mean, a lesser degree would be going to my bishop saying, hey, you know what? I really like my neighbor's husband. Let's pray about it. See if you get some divine confirmation that I can sleep with uh, my neighbor's husband. I mean, this is, this is horrible. Where's the sense in this? Where's the, to re receive divine confirmation through prayer. Now, they're gonna tell us, as far as has been revealed, a person may repent of, repent and be forgiven for the sin of abortion. So I'm going to help you abort your baby because of these five things, rape, incest, health, life and health, and uh, severe defects. So if it's under any of these guidelines, we kill the baby, but then you can repent of the sin. Doesn't make sense, does it? As far as has been revealed, a person may repent and be forgiven for the sin of a portion. So does the bishop have to repent for the divine confirmation through prayer? Okay, so they're saying you can repent. Well, guess what? And DNC, 
section 4218 and I quote and now behold I speak unto the church thou shalt not kill and he that kills shall not have forgiveness in this world nor in the world to come so what do we do we throw away all their crap and we go with what God says. I believe Jesus' blood covers every sin. I believe that you have to confess you're a sinner. You have to repent. You have to acknowledge the wrong that you've done. And guess what? His blood can wash your sins away. And yes, even of murder. Isaiah 55 uh, verse 7, let the wicked for, forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. He'll have mercy and, and to our God for he abundantly pardons. Abundantly. And Isaiah 1 18, come now and let us reason together saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, we all know it's scarlet. We all know it is very red. They shall be as white as snow. They, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. <sighs> I believe from my experience with those Mormon missionaries, there's a lot of people in uh, the LDS church that has no clue that this church supports murder of the unborn, innocent baby lives. And so, I wanna to say too, one of the main theme, themes of Mormonism is about family. That's one of their main themes. They've got good families, they love the family, they're, um, it's about being eternally connected with your family, your work in the temple is about ceilings, it's all about being eternally connected. You spend tons of time and money doing your genealogy, finding birth dates and names of your dead ancestors, but if you or your daughter gets pregnant by rape or incest, or your health is jeopardized, you can go to your bishop and pray with him for divine confirmation. And with the help of your competent physician in his or her nice white, a nice white coat, they can give you uh, the okay to drop the guillotine pl blade on the innocent life that has no voice. Now every one of these babies that are killed in this country not one of them has a voice it could have been you it could be me but they have no voice we are the voice of the voiceless and I plead with the LDS people I plead with God fearing there's a lot of good people that really love the Lord in this church and I just plead with them, please stand up for, for these children that don't have a voice. Stand up against this slaughter. There is, there is no excuse. There is no, to take the, a life of a baby. I don't care how it got here. And so, uh, if any of the listeners want to verify this information, you go on lds.org, click on scriptures and study link. Then click on gospel topics, and then click on the A section, and it's just right there. And you can read it for yourselves that yes, the LDS Church is part of this uh, this genocide. It's part of this uh, 
murder machine that we have in America. And this is supposedly supposed to be the only true church on the earth. Thank you.